In West Nashville overnight, a nearly six-hour standoff involving Metro's SWAT team ended after police discovered the man was not in the house. News Channel 5's Cuthbert Langley is at the West Precinct this morning. So, Cuthbert, where is the man now, and, and how did this standoff start? Hey, good morning, Jennifer. That's the big question this morning. Where is this suspect? Police say they are looking at his previous addresses to try to find him. The reason why police responded was he, there was an argument but that got pretty violent between the suspect and his wife that led to some pretty tense moments when the SWAT team arrived. Take a listen to what happened this morning. Those, of course, were flashbangs SWAT team members used around 2 o'clock. They had most of Robertson Avenue shut down for hours. Authorities are saying the argument between the suspect and his wife spilled outside into the driveway where he started hitting her, then went back in the home to grab a gun and then fired multiple shots. Thankfully, she was able to get away and to call 911. When police arrived, they realized the suspect at the center of this had a criminal history that was pretty violent, so that's why the SWAT team was called out. But again, they were out there for several Several hours calling him on the loudspeaker, trying to get the suspect out of the home. By the time they gained entry, though, he wasn't in sight, nowhere to be found. So police are trying to look for him this morning. We have asked for the name of the suspect in a description, but we have yet to receive that information. The victim, thankfully, is fine this morning. She just suffered some minor injuries. Those gunshots, thankfully, did not hit her. Police are asking if you know anything about who the suspect is or where he might be to call Crime Stoppers. That number, of course, is 74 Crime. We're live at the West Precinct this morning. Cuthbert Langley, News Channel 5 HD. Thank you, Cuthbert. One person was shot and critically injured, while seven others were arrested during another night of unrest in Ferguson, Missouri. Police also fired multiple smoke and tear gas canisters into a crowd of protesters who refused to comply with a newly imposed curfew that took effect at midnight. As tactical vehicles approached the crowd, officers announced over a loudspeaker that failure to comply with the curfew could lead to arrests. The officers then began firing smoke into the crowd. Meanwhile, hundreds of protesters did leave peacefully before the midnight to 5 a.m. deadline took effect. Missouri Governor Jay Nixon announced the curfew yesterday when he also declared a state of emergency in the St. Louis suburb where 18-year-old Michael Brown was killed by a police officer a week ago. And a candlelight vigil will be held later this week in Clarksville to pray for the people of Ferguson. People will gather at the St. John Missionary Baptist Church on Tiny Town Road. The vigil will be Wednesday evening at 7 in front of the church. And in Oakland, California, at least two people were arrested and a police officer heard after a protest turned violent. The officer was assaulted during the protest Friday night as police and protesters briefly scuffled after several windows were broken and a trash can set on fire. During a street march, a police spokeswoman says the protesters injured the officer and pepper sprayed two others. The cleanup of Interstate 65 in Williamson County is going well and faster than expected. And if all goes as planned, that stretch of the interstate could be back open by later this afternoon. The southbound lanes of I-65 at Paytonsville Road have been closed since that tanker hauling fuel crashed and exploded Friday morning. Yesterday, crews tore down both the old overpass and the new one that was under construction because both had become unstable after the explosion. Workers spent most of the day removing debris. Drivers, meanwhile, were forced to take a detour onto Paytonsville Road, getting off and then back on the interstate using the on-ramps to avoid crossing under the damaged bridge. This morning, grading crews will make sure the ditches and shoulders are safe. Then paving crews will start paving and striping the road. After that, barrier rails and traffic and control devices will be reset. And when that's all done, all lanes of 65 should reopen. And TDOT says that could happen as early as noon, which is much earlier than originally expected. The bridge, though, will still have to be rebuilt, and that could take as long as three months. As for the cost, TDOT says it's still too early to tell. The co-owner of the Highland Rim Speedway is in the hospital this morning after falling from a forklift platform some 20 feet in the air yesterday. We're told Roger Cunningham was changing flags on the top of telephone poles before last night's race and was standing on a platform lifted by a forklift when the engine on the forklift gave out. And the whole thing started rolling backwards and then eventually fell over. That threw Cunningham off the platform and onto the ground. We're told he has no internal bleeding and a CT scan showed no brain trauma. He does, though, have two broken legs and a collapsed lung and, as a result, is on a ventilator. He's the type of man you could call 3 o'clock in the morning if you had a problem and he'd be there at 3.30 uh, if he couldn't get there any sooner. Uh, it's absolute great. 
the, the best partner I ever had. At last check, Cunningham was in critical condition at Vanderbilt. Detectives in Rutherford County made a large drug bust at a home in Murfreesboro. They seized 131 marijuana plants from a home on Elam Road, putting an end to what they called a major marijuana growing operation. The plants were told have a street value of $131,000. Concerned neighbors had called police about suspicious activity at the home. The owner, Jesse Duncan, now faces felony charges of manufacturing marijuana as well as paraphernalia charges. Once the police investigation is over, the equipment used in the growing operation will be donated to Rutherford County Schools horticulture classes.